So I wanted to know kind of what the cost would be for creating a multiplayer game with Godot and like the hosting cost basically and like the max amount of players we could get on a server. So I built a kind of multiplayer stress test to try and experiment with this. So I went to um, this article right here, Multiplayer in Godot 4 by Fabio. And I basically copy and pasted like all this multiplayer code. It uses the new multiplayer spawner to spawn like player nodes or whatever nodes you want. And then the multiplayer synchronizer, which synchronizes properties like velocity and direction. Uh, I, I just changed a few things. So you can see I'm actually connected. I'm in California and I have a server running uh, on AWS on the East Coast. And I have a few metrics here. The most important one being the average latency. You can see it says like 6.8 milliseconds. And I'll just show you how I tried to calculate that. And I'm not sure how accurate it is, but I'll just show you what I did. Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. So in the player script, I have an average... I have a few variables here. And so what I do is I listen for the uh, synchronized signal that comes from the, uh, I think this is the multiplayer synchronizer uh, node. Multiplayer, yeah, multiplayer synchronizer. Um, and so it sets off a signal called synchronized whenever it synchronizes data. So basically, on the client side, every time that happens, I set the latency to zero because in the physics, in the process function, I'm just, I continuously add delta to that latency time. And then every time I get a new update, I set it back to zero and I add it to this, I add whatever the latency was to this latency sum and I basically find the average based on how many synchronizations have happened. So it, it, I feel like that, that should be some indication of, of latency. If any of you know of a better way to figure out basically latency to the server, I'd be interested in knowing what that is. Feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the the basic modification I made to that. Let's go back to the game. Because also, so I have, the one thing that doesn't make sense to me is I have the the latency every time I set it to zero and it's giving me zero MS and that just doesn't seem right. So that's why I'm, I kind of, I'm second guessing if this implementation is a real reflection of average latency. Um, let's see. So, so I'll, I'll run a demo. Um, well, you know, I'll run the demo sooner than later because that's the most exciting part. So let's, so we're going to launch. So I'm one player on this server. I'm going to launch 19, uh, instances that will connect to this server. Hopefully if all things go well and You'll see on the bottom left here, the CPU utilization on the server right now. So it's at 4% right now. And then as players start to, as those instances start to join, yeah, now you see the players, they're joining. And the, the percentage will shoot up to about, I think it's 68%, 70%. <laughs> so this is 20 players on a multiplayer um, server in Godot 4. I've tried it with 30 and that kind of gets to 98%. And so that's, I think, cutting it a bit too close. So all we're doing here is movement and jumping. Uh, oh, I'll also mention the floor is not a flat plane. It's like, a, it has like roughness to it. I thought 
that would be more indicative of the kind of uh, computation the physics engine would have to do is, you know, you're probably not going to be walking on completely flat surfaces all the time. You'll be walking on uh, collision shapes that are a bit more complex. Um, so yeah, so you can see here, it's anywhere between 64 and 70%. Um, and this is 20 people, so that's not too bad. Um, I mean, I feel like you could probably host like 5v5 League of Legends style games or 5v5 Valorant, those kind of things. Because um, obviously there's going to be a few more physics calculations like on ray casts if you're doing a first person shooter and i'm sure that's going to eat up some more cpu utilization so if you have 20 here make it 10 and then that gives you a bit more headroom so the price so this is with this is on aws's ARM instances, the G in the T4G.nano is their Gravitron CPU. It's the ARM CPU that they've made themselves. So this number, this $252, is. I'll tell you how I got to that. So I figured, okay, let's assume you have 10,000 users, players, and let's say they're playing four hours a day for 30 days. So they come home at six after work and maybe they play from eight to 12. Uh, so that's four hours. And then let's just say for 30 days, let's just assume that's every day. And then the price of this is, um, where's that four hundredth of a penny of a cent? And then divide by, well, you can divide by 20. Let's just divide by 10 because there's more games that are five on five. So, okay, my number is going to be double. Okay, so it's more like, yeah. If you, can if you can make a game with 20 people, then you can cut that price in half. But let's just say $500 a month um, for 10000 players so that's I feel like that's a pretty pretty good price um, so unfortunately I wasn't able to hit like 64 or a hundred players um, I don't know if I talked about this or I just skipped to the thing but the demo but I tried doing the physics on the separate thread which is right I'll show you Right here under physics, run on separate thread. I've tried that, uh, but nothing, nothing changed, unfortunately. Um, I tried multi-core AWS instances. I tried different tiers. So like they have uh, compute optimized tiers. It's their C5, C6 the C tier, I thought, oh, can I get a core a CPU with better single threaded performance? But it didn't seem to make a difference. Um, so, but yeah, if any of you have any ideas on like how to properly, if there is a way to host, say a hundred people on a Godot multiplayer server, I'd be interested to know. Um, Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.